All right, so today we're going to compile our Dart code into JS, JavaScript. Uh, I've created a folder called Dart on my desktop. What I'm just going to do is I'm just going to open command line here. All right, um, to create a project, you see Dart creates. And the project name, so I'm just gonna call this tutorials. <coughs> uh, if I refresh, you're going to see the folder has been created. So we're entering to the tutorial folder, and then we call our Visual Studio code. So this comes prebuilt with a program six times seven. And then they've written the test for it, which is 42. You don't have to worry about all of this. We're just going to create another file called hello. That. This is just going to print hello world, which is the first program most programming languages would expect you to run. So we've created our program. The next thing we're going to do, and I'm just going to show you this for the sake of debugging so you understand the errors you get. So if you write he that hello dot that. So to run a program, you say that and then the file name. So this is the file name. But right now, the file is going to tell you it cannot read hello world dot that because that's located in the lib folder. And we are in tutorials, so if I press ls, you see we are not even in the lib. We have to enter into the lib folder. Now, in this case, if I run the same code I wrote previously, you see we get the hello world. That's just for debugging purpose. So every error you get counts. Always mark it down and understand why you get the errors and how you fix them. So now we're going to compile into JavaScript. So you see that compile JS and then the name of the file, which is hello.dat. Now this is going to compile it into 200 and okay, 199 megabytes of memory, which is a, like a lot for just hello world at that, right? Now, it has a lot of pre-builds. I think this is over this is over 2737 lines for just hello world. Comes with dependencies and map. There's so many tests that you know I think we could have just done without <laughs> because Okay, let's just let's just look into the file and see what size is taken, right? So this is the lib. This is taking 97 kilobytes, taking 11 and taking you know 10, 6 kilobytes. I hello world was just one kilobyte, but um, so you have. I have a node on my installed on my system. So you can see I have like version 20. It doesn't matter the version, it would be able to run your JavaScript. So I'm just gonna write node dot forward slash. Then you see the one with the JavaScript logo assigned to it. This usually adds dot js. It's going to have the extension dot js. So if I run this, I get the same hello world. Nothing is changing. But then I could have, like, most people are going to argue we could have written a simple hello world in JavaScript like hello.js. I'm just going to create this, right? And I could have said var greetings <laughs> equal to uh, hello world, right? And then print that to the console.
that may be true that that's true not maybe true it is true <laughs> right i'm just gonna change it a couple of times so you see we're running the same file right that's true and if we look at the contents of that file now you see it's the same one kilobyte right but there are reasons for why this is working like this i mean you may not see it for hello world but you know as you dig deep into that and its object-oriented structure you'd understand why well yeah that's it for today